Hi, in Shop Joe. Welcome back. I had a video up about making sure your mileage is correct on your odometer. And a lot of the information about the dashes was information that I learned over the years. And then from the comments that I got on the channel, uh, I realized that more had changed with the dash part of it than I realized. So I decided to pull the video down because uh, one uh, viewer said that the information was inaccurate. So I, I needed to get that off of there until I was straight on that. But I'm going to repost uh, a part of that video that's tonight or today about the offset mileage in ECM because that's absolutely correct. I know that. And then uh, you'll know how to do that when you either change ECMs on an engine or say you put a used engine in a vehicle and there's already um, miles on the ECM, you could check the dash and then you could take the mileage that's in the ECM already and you could add offset mileage to make the mileage come out to the number on a dash. So that gives you a couple options to uh, get, make sure your odometer stays correct. And um, I guess the bottom line of the odometer is call the dealer of whoever makes the vehicle. Uh, I, I got a number of different comments about um, software that would change the uh, dash and, and process it to do it. And that's beyond the scope of what I talk about. So I'm just going to leave that hornet's nest alone. So let's get going and take a look again at offset mileage and offset hours in the ECM. Right here we're viewing our Insight desktop. And on the left they call that the view bar where you've got disconnect from ECM, fault codes. And those are on-off switches that basically open up modules. And the modules are what you see on the right. So I've clicked on the features and parameters uh, button. And when you put your mouse over those you'll see a rectangle appear around them. And as you move the mouse up and down over them, the rectangles seem to move. And uh, those are uh, analogous to a push button on and off. So once down, it's on. A second time down, it's off. So I pushed down on the features and parameters. And on the right, it opened up. Those always load in alphabetical order by the first letter. So we're going to go down, scroll down to the bottom where it says trip information. And you see there's a plus in front of that. They call those red icons the toolboxes. And if you click that plus, it'll open up. And then once it opens up, you'll see this. And here we've got a minus in front of trip information. And you see those screwdrivers. There, that's actually a little, uh, the icon to the left of ECM distance offset is actually a screwdriver. And when the screwdrivers are leaning to the left, the, hand, the blue handle's on the bottom and it's, the top is leaning to the left, you see the lock on there? That means you can't change it. Now the reason we, that this looks like this is because I'm not working on an actual engine here. I'm looking at an ECM image. With this software, you can pull all the information out of the ECM and look at it at your desk. But everything is locked. So when you see this, it's locked. If there's a password in the ECM, you'll also see this. Everything's going to be locked. You can't change anything. Uh, in the real world, if there was no password and I was connected, there would be no lock and the screwdriver would be laying over the other way. The important thing is that the lock is missing. So you've got ECM distance offset, engine distance offset, and then farther down is t ECM time and engine time. So ECM distance and engine time offset are, as soon as the key goes on, it's counting. Um, a lot of times ECM distance will be different than engine distance. And we'll look at that in the trip information in a second. But you're going to set engine distance offset. And if you, were, if you had an engine you were replacing in a vehicle and you wanted to, to make sure that the new engine read all the mile per hour odometer stuff accurately. If you had 100,000 miles on the old engine, you would put engine distance offset at 100,000 miles. And then uh, 
engine time offset. If the old engine had a thousand hours, you would put a thousand hours in here on this one. Now, many times I don't bother to set ECM distance offset or ECM time offset. I just set engine distance offset and engine time offset. That way in the trip information, when you look at total engine hours or actually equipment hours, you'll see the total hours from the old ECM and then the recon ECM. If you change engines and put a new engine in, uh, you don't really want to do this because the engine doesn't have any offset hours or offset time. This is only if you put a, a rebuilt or reman ECM on the engine and you're not changing the engine in the vehicle. Okay, so let's move on to the trip information. So here we are at the trip information on the far left. In our view bar, you can see the numeral one the green, in the green where it says trip information. I have now unchecked features and parameters. By unchecked, I mean I pushed it down and let it up. You just put the mouse on it and mouse left mouse click it. Now I put my mouse over trip information and left mouse clicked it. And this screen opens up. At the top, you see all trips cumulative. That means total distance. There's a resettable trip distance farther down. You don't, you don't look at that if you're looking for total distance because you can right click this, this screen and you can do resets on it. So if it's been reset, then you're not going to see the total distance. But under all trips, you will always see total distance, total time. So if this engine has, uh, let's look at engine distance is 466,785. So if the truck had 66,785 miles on it and the ECM failed in the past, I would put in that 66,785 when I put the new ECM on and we can see we drove it 400,000 miles farther. Okay, and you can scroll down. There's a field for time where it'll say uh, ECM time and then ECM distance and those uh, numbers would be reflected here when you put those offsets in. So that's what that's for, and that's what you use it for. So once again, thanks for joining Engine Shop Joe. Sorry if there was any confusion on that. And this channel is really about Cummins, so I'm gonna to stick to Cummins as much as I can because that's what I really know. So we'll see you next time on Engine Shop Joe. Have a good week.